Well, let's dive into some wines here. Let's see what, uh, what we've got going. So we're going to start off with the uh, Third Man. This is the uh, 2009 Third Man from Gramercy Cellars. Go ahead and pour this up here. So uh, what is going on with this, uh, with this blend? So um, what we noticed was, it's funny, you know, a lot of our cuvées, um, I, I had some forethinking on, on how I was going to make the wine, but a lot of them kind of just developed um, through the quality of the fruit. Mm -hmm. So we started with Tempranillo, not because I wanted to, that I thought that the world needed Washington Tempranillo, right. but we bought a vineyard um, and we said, oh, you know, we'll just probably make rosé out of it because that's what you do with grapes that you don't know how good they're going to be. Yeah. Um, we got it in the, in the fermenter. We're like, wow, Tempranillo is really good. And it actually turns out that we think Washington is going to be an amazing place for Tempranillo. Really? We're, yeah, we're going to plant some more. Okay, cool. All right, let's, let's, uh, let's give this a whirl here. So, on the nose, what I was getting kind of first off is a, that Grenache kind of rich red fruit character uh, coming through, and then kind of those darker, little riper uh, fruit notes coming through kind of on the on the back end of it. But then on the palate, you get this amazing brightness and this amazing acidity with that that red and dark fruit flavor. What kind of uh, elements do you pick up with this? Yeah, so so Grenache in um, Grenache in general is, is is a grape that that wants ripeness and, and naturally will, you know, that, that's why it was, it was such a great, um, great for brandy. You know, if you look at Spain and parts of France, they're using it for brandy because it gets, it gets super ripe. Um, so Grenache, lots and lots of really ripe cherry kind of flavors. Um, and then what we do is, is we use Syrah to basically give it acidity, give it freshness. Um, because we have some of the coldest Syrah vineyards um, in Washington. And then what Morved does is Morved kind of gives you depth and, and, and mid palate, almost like a black flavor to it. Yeah. Um, and we find that, that the, the three varietals grow really, really yeah. well together. Absolutely. Hmm. Interesting. So, um, what is uh, your philosophy on um, oak aging and, and the regiment that you put these wines through? Because I'm not getting uh, a whole lot of new oak character at all. Yeah, you know, we, um, we've been really, um, we don't use a lot of new oak at all. The only thing we really use new oak for is, is Cabernet, where we'll do 20 to 30 percent um, new oak. Everything else um, is either two year or up to uh, six or seven year, depending on, on what. Um, Grenache, we really, really liked Punchin. Punchin is basically um, 500 liters or a uh, double barrel. Yeah. Um, just changes the, the uh, ratio of wood to uh, wine, you get different oxygen exposure. Um, and those are all neutral Punchins. Um, we use a little bit of new oak for Syrah, but, but just, just a touch. You know, for me, Syrah is like salt. Oh, sorry, oak is like salt. Right. If it's, if it's missing, you definitely notice it. If there's too much, you know, the wine can be almost undrinkable. It's overblown. Yeah, yeah. well, I think, you know, going on your philosophy of wines that, uh, you know, have a pairing with food, the, the oak um, you know, definitely can dominate that if it, if it gets to be uh, too much. So I think this is great. The, the thing that I love about this wine is, you know, that fruit character that's coming through, but it's got this this savory element to it that seems like it's it's just uh, the texture of it is really palate coating without being um, I guess overly viscous yeah and that's the, again you know the, the idea is that you know you don't sit on your porch and, and, and drink wine you know you actually have it with food so yeah. we're always thinking about you know what is this going to go with and and, um, and what know, is your pairing for this what do you think you know what, if you look at what they do um, in the southern Rhone, you know it's a lot of grilled meats yeah and, that's and, what i would see with know, this definitely like that, yeah lamb sure. or something would be like that would be ideal with it um the the, the name the third man is that just a bl uh, a play because it's the three different Great yeah, it, it's, it's three different varietals, but also in, um, in 2008, uh, Chris Figgins from Leonetti and Figgins Family Winery, he decided, hey, I think, I think you and I should go climb Mount Rainier. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's kind of like the thing to do when you live in Seattle and you look at it all the time. And, yeah. And uh, so he convinced me to, to get up there and, and climb it. And when I, when I was researching the climb, I, I found this thing called, it's called the third man factor. And when climbers get into trouble, um, uh, usually you climb in teams of, of, a lot of times you climb in teams of two. Yeah. And... Um, when these teams got into trouble, uh, a lot of them saw this, whatever you want to call it, this, this voice or vision of a third person helping them down the mountain. Really? Yeah, so I thought it was a cool story. Yeah, absolutely. That is cool, huh? Okay, I didn't, I didn't know that.